unanswered. Things like sex and money, uh, drugs and alcoholism, prophecy and prophets in our country. So, catch us at 9 p.m. every Tuesday on Family TV as we explore different topics and make attempts to answer the different life topics. Every Tuesday with me, Manuel Odeke, let's talk. Good evening once again. It is a joy to catch up with you here on Family TV, uh, where we enrich lives. It is amazing. It has been a great week uh, with a lot of ups and downs here and there. A lot has happened during this week, and uh, we should be thankful to the Lord that uh, some of us are still alive, and the Lord has kept us safe and sound. My name is Emmanuel Odeke, uh, the host of Let's Talk here on Church of Uganda Family TV. Uh, a lot has happened. On a sad note, the governor uh, went to glory to be with the Lord, but then also on the other side of the show. Uh, today we saw uh, His Grace uh, Paul Semogirede uh, being installed as the Archbishop of the Kampala Archdiocese. So a lot has been happening, but uh, just keep your eyes uh, on, on, on whatever is happening and keep, keep calm. The Lord is in control. Today I'm excited uh, to be having uh, two people with me for this show, and uh, one of them is a great man. I've uh, seen him and met him over quite a lot of things, and he's called the Engineer Chibuka. Engineer Chibuka is the chairman, uh, uh, sorry, president, Father's Union, at uh, the Diocese of Kampala. And uh, would you like to say hello to our viewers? Let well, me well, thank you, Manuel. Um, good evening, viewers. What a joy, what a wonderful time to be together and share in oneness. We bless the Lord. I should say, Happy New Year to all our viewers. Happy New Year to the Father's Union Fraternity. Happy New Year to the entire Church of Uganda family. May God's blessings be upon each one of us and may His grace prevail in our lives, they are throughout. Blessed be each one of you watching this program. Uh, thank you so much. His full name is Engineer Ronald M. Chiboka. Good to see you here on the show. Thank you. Uh, one of the, the other person is our usual uh, culprit in this show is called uh, Paul. And Paul comes to us from uh, uh, the Diocese of Kampala, but particularly St. Stephen. So, Paul, would you like to say hello? Yeah, uh, for viewers, my name is Paul, praise Geno. I love the Lord, and it's good to be with engineer Chibuka here. I hope one day I'll join Father's Union wow. when you're still the president. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Now, now you may notice that on the show there is a boy. And <laughs> Wow, the mother. Uh, that's notice, great. You notice that there's a boy and then there's a man. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I'll, I'll play the joke. I'll, I'll play the joke ground for that matter. That's great. <laughs> now, uh, engineer, yes. for starters, yes. and, and being that you are the chair, the president, Father's Union, yes. the entire diocese of Kampala, yes. what is the role of Father's Union in the Church of Christ? particularly Church of Uganda. Mm. We, we could be coming from a background where we know uh, these are old men who put on some blue shirts in yes. some dioceses. They mm. put on some white shirts with some word in it, some yes. logo. What is the role of Father's Union? Uh, thank you, Emmanuel and the viewers. Um, Father's Union is a very important organ in the Church of Uganda in respect with the building the body of Christ within the first setting of the family. Because the family unit is the first setting where the church starts from. So a father plays a very important role right in that first setting. And the father is the chief priest in that first environment. So when you say father's union in the body of Christ, 
building a young person in knowing Christ starts right from the family unit. And that's the role of a father who is the head of the family. So a father who heads the family must be charged with the role of making Christ known in that family. So it's the first role of a father. And therefore, as a group where men get together, fellowship together, share in oneness, discuss and debate what takes them from one level to another in a line of building the family, father's union, that's where its big role rotates from. So when you say in the body of Christ, that's our first unit. If the body of Christ is known in the family, then it can move from the family to any other environment setting. Right from the family into the church building. Because a child who, is, who has known Christ from the home will always be a good example wherever that child steps. Whether at school, whether in the church, whether in the public, whether in any community, that one will know. Everybody will know that that one has been fathered and has been taught to know Christ right from home. So in other words, there are young people who have grown, yes. but they have not been brought up. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh, uh, let, let me talk to Paul. <laughs> Paul, what explains why some young people, um, what is the explanation for young people who don't seem to be father in this generation? Um, I, I think the main thing is uh, I think there's there's a way the whole weight that fatherhood holds has lost meaning in our generation where we have absentee fathers I don't know how to, to call that but their work is to plant seeds in every man's womb and run away but also there are those who are there physically you can see there's a father figure moving, but in actual sense, they are, like, they are very empty and they are not playing their role. Now, that say, that brings a generation of youths or young people whose minds have not been, have not been mentored or brought up in a way that they are supposed to give respect or they are supposed to, 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 to be obedient to the fatherly figures in their lives. So when, there's, when the father is missing, or when the fathers are missing, when we get it from the Bible, right from the instruction God gives Adam, you know? Adam was supposed to take, Adam was supposed to take the fatherly role of the family. And so if we have to follow the pattern of the Bible, where Adam was charged with the role of taking care of his family, and then we come to the things happening now, and to find absentee fathers, we are going to get the kind of youths you're asking me. So they, yeah. I hope you're not one of those. <laughs> no, my, my father did well. But if you are one of them, you <laughs> definitely wouldn't be part of this show. <laughs> All right. Yeah, what, what explains why do we have fathers who are absent on duty, yet they are present mm. in the night, mm. yet absent in the fathering business? Uh, you know, um, there's a, what we call people shifting from the would be right position to adopt positions which are not biblically, uh, which are not biblically said. I'll give you an example. Fatherhood and father roles started right long ago, right from the time of creation and biblical times. I want to give you an example of uh, Genesis 22, 6, where we see uh, Abraham setting fire into the lives of this young man, son Isaac. He really played a big role in shaping Isaac. And that could be the life that any father could emulate. A father could be in a position to set fire into the life of a child or a young man so that he can be groomed in the right direction, knowing the steps to take at different stages of growth. So that can only be done when the father is present in the life of a child. So what explains the absent fathers is that the adoption of a new culture 
which is not godly. The minute godly culture moves away from somebody's life and that person adopts another way of thinking and doing things and planning, then that uh, takes us to the fathers the, the, the young man is talking about, uh, whom in other scientific way we could call the planters or agriculture fathers. So please, <laughs> that, 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 that to me gives an explanation to such kind of environment. And when it gets there, my young man who is worried about the generation of unfathered children or young people, uh, it, it, that, that's where it comes from. Because wisdom is passed on. If a father is a good father and has lived an exemplary life, all the wisdom, all the ability, all the way he has been doing things will be calculated into the lives of those young people around him and those who are growing seeing him as a role model so if a father is not a role model the chances are so high that will take us the kind of fathers we are we don't want to discuss but who seems to be in existence out there but you made a statement the young man was uh, clearly fathered and well guided and i should say it's our cry today that we want to see fathers turning around it's the one of the roles of fathers union turning fathers from being absent fathers to available fathers and they do a father law so that they can mentor a generation that takes the kingdom of god further ahead each and every day those days when uh, some of us were growing yes we were privileged to sit with our parents and, and the elderly yes just to make sure that they, they impart some of this wisdom. wisdom yes and sometimes it will, it will be done around the fire yes and, and it was a very beautiful time yes today we have uh, i am privileged to be having close to a 92 old father with a lot of wisdom mm. in his head mm. and you see some of these people no longer can can they have time yes. to do the writing, yes. maybe write a book mm. or author a book. Mm. But how best can some people who may not be having that opportunity, mm. who would have not had the opportunity, mm. to sit around the, the, the fire with some of these elderly people with wisdom, yes. how do, can they benefit from, from the Father's Union, being mm. that some of them are members of our churches? Yes. In, in other words, where, what is the place of Father's Union? in the wider church. Actually, uh, thank you, Emmanuel. I will start with uh, one very great example which has just happened, a week closing, when one of the elders, major and all, uh, an educationist, a great man of God, he has known Christ, he has preached severally, he's a member of Father's Union, he has done a great work. He really shocked the entire nation by the way he fought corruption. And this, no, no other than Professor Duboga. Think you know him? Yes, I do. I think there was an application for a placement in the form of leading schools. And one of the applicants who wanted to be an headmaster of one of the good schools a, a kind of enveloped money into the application. And he picked it and said, Oh, forgot your money in this application. <laughs> Surrendered it. <laughs> That's one of the roles of Father's Union. That's one of the roles of great men that they can play in a wider society. Because much as this professor is part of us and is one of us, he spoke to the entire nation and to the entire world. One other elder who is also full of wisdom, was written about some time, is a Canon Justice James Ogola. Very great man. Very great man in church. He's a lay canon in church. He's a member of Father's Union. He did a great thing. He said, no. Corruption, not my way. And somebody who was trying to do things, he said, please, pick your envelope and go. See no more. <laughs> this is the role. These are the great men. And we are picking wisdom from them. I happen to be privileged that I'm one of the writers. And uh, uh, the, the book I published, I researched still from these elders. It's called Youth Listen. Life is a book. You write your own story. That publication is already out, about to be launched. And the... Uh, I'm also writing another and around 75% of it finished. It's called The Journey Through the Times. Still talking about the youth 
and how we journey through life. So, when we reach out and want this wisdom, we recite from these elders. We reach out to them. We reach out to them in several circles. And when you tap the wisdom from them, you saturate them. However, there's a challenge. Most of our elder people in this nation have been treated as if they don't matter. And they haven't been given a chance to shape the different areas which can help to develop our nation. Let it be in the political circles. Let it be in the economic circles. Let it be maybe where they feature and you can see them. Uh, they are in the religious circles. But these are the areas that people of wisdom who can advise, who can be consulted on matters of national importance, they are left out. These are the men you are talking about. They are out there. And these are the great fathers. No matter the, the sect where they come from, but they have the wisdom that can be impacted into the generation. Because as we know, gener uh, wisdom passes on from generation to generation, generation to generation. Where a generational gap ha happens to appear, just know that that generation will find a lot of challenges. And I want to tell you, you made a statement, sitting down on a fire camp, our parents mentored us. They showed us the way to grow. They showed us, uh, they showed us religion. They showed us areas of faith. They showed us how to work. They showed us how to be uh, people who can command respect in the community. And that one was done by not highly educated people, but medium level or low level the people. One will tell you, my parents never went to school, but impacted this, impacted me this way. And th that's the reason why I am who I am today. So we listened. We gave them space. We had to respect them because they commanded respect. I want to give you a scripture. First Corinthians 11.1. 1. When Christ was talking about imitating, said, imitate me, I mean Paul, imitate me as I imitate Christ. I want to ask you, the elder who is there, the father who is somewhere there, can you be imitated? Does your character depict a picture of you being imitated? That's the first question. Because when you get old age, or when you are the elder, all you have to offer much is to make sure that you impact those coming below you. In whichever way, you impact them. But does your character give you the chance? Does your character speak so? I want to tell you, our parents used to be so highly reserved people and do things in the right direction. Let me say this. We used to grow not knowing that anyone elder can turn into that small house behind. We never knew that they could go there. Because we used to know that it's children who can go there but not elder people. And there is no at any one time you could meet with an elder there. No, it's not possible. I remember they taught us when we were growing that uh, girls burn. And we grew up knowing girls do burn. We never go to, got any close to girls, not even in their bedroom. We are totally separate because we fear they are burning. And when we started thinking, it was very hard to imagine what burns on a girl. But what came to our mind was like uh, the depression of girls they burn. And I remember we had a girl, well, she was old enough, she was called the Nansobuga with the big breasts. And we used not to get close around because we know the breasts will burn us. And we feared that for a long time. And that's how our parents taught us. And there was nothing like mingling around in such kind of unexpected way. Today, we're talking about young girls as early as 13, 12, they can't go back to school, they're pregnant. The parental role is not well shaped and played. Because that, in fact, this lockdown, which has been there for these two years, has taught us a lot. You cannot say that uh, it's, it's the responsibility of a teacher or a head teacher to, to, to make sure that the child is not getting pregnant out there. No, it's not. It's not at all. They have been home with us. And some of them have gotten pregnant. Exactly. While at home. While at home. With now, parents. Now, that's what you want to ask. Are you responsible parents? Can you be imitated? Are you a role model as a parent? So, the first stage is that as parents, we are failing in the parental role. I told you, 
Genesis 22, 6, when Isaac and Jacob stood together and the father shaped him, the boy. When you get to Proverbs 22, 6, it talks about us, the parents. It instructs us, giving us instruction on our role towards our children. In the fact, it's command. What can we do to raise these children? So, the fathers, we must stand in the right way of the Bible guidance, biblical guidance, to do the fatherly role. And that's the strength of Father's Union, and that's the role we want to play, and they remind every father that we get back to the right track. I think if, if most of these churches have got to understand the real essence of Father's Union and what they're doing, yes. it would be far. Exactly. It would really be far. Paul, what happens in a society where we have 75% close to 80% of the population as young people, and we have about 25 or even less of these old men full of wisdom and, and uh, the young people seem to be so fast to, to give these young, to give these elderly people time to shape, uh, to shape this nation, to shape tradition, to shape faith, to shape whatever they have to. What happens with the matter of role models? I asked a young man, who is your role model? And you'll be surprised when they told me their role model is, you don't want to meet this person. You don't want. What happened? Why aren't we accepting as young people? Why are we refusing to get this wise counsel from this old man? I think, again, from the biblical perspective, where we begin from, if you are to read almost the whole of Titus, it talks about false teaching. Those are people who preach the other gospel that doesn't exist. And then also part of Timothy and most most of the New Testament letters. So why am I bringing false teaching? I think we are living in a time where the so I don't know what, what people really want, but the, the whole thing of making, trying to make life to be easy, that when you're a parent, you have no right to tell your son this is wrong. You know? For example, like engineer, you tell your own child abusing an elder is wrong and the child will say it is my right and there are laws that defend such a thing. Now, if you bring up your children in a way that is not godly, because the reason why personally I love my Bible is that once you believe in this Bible, it means you have come to a point of realizing that you are a sinner who needs a savior? Now, when a parent is to use the biblical means to bring up their children, I don't think their children will be in that manner. But what brings this is that many youths or children have grown up adopting to the standard of the world and have allowed this standard of the world to eat them up so that when you ask a child who is your role model, their role models are found on, on Facebook, they are found on TVs. I don't know if Family TV plays such music that gives people the secular artists as, as their role models. But of course, this being a church-founded TV, I think they are trying. They are level best. But the thing is, mentorship or being role model or something of a kind, once you allow your children to embody themselves with this secularism, or understanding of the world, they will end there. They will end there. And that comes from what we call the absentee parenthood or the, or the agricultural fathers and the mothers, of course. So you find that what makes people not have role models, if your own father is a drunkard, definitely your role model will be nice, special, ego lager, because this is what comes to the table, you know? If your father is somebody who doesn't care, a womanizer, what is going to be your role model? The short skirts, the long but not there. You, you find they say you're, you're putting on something that is light. So that will be your role model of your children. And so what brings all this, Emma, to me is again the way we bring up children. 
Even churches are not doing much. I feel so sad when I see pastors trying to defend divorce. These are fathers. They are defending wrong things. I feel sad when you hear pastors being mentioned as people who are defending homosexuality. So tell me, if your father is defending such useless things, if your church is defending such things, what kind of role model do you think your congregants are going to get? That's tough enough, you know, what it can mean to be uh, when you have a uh, pastor pastoring your child once in a week and you have a parent who should be pastoring this child every day of their lives and they are totally absent and all they do is plant seeds I don't know whether Ginax or maize but all they do is plant seeds uh, my Bible in Exodus chapter 20 and verse number 12 reads and says honor thy father and thy mother that Thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord, thy God, giveth thee. The only commandment with a promise on it. We are yet to be going for a short break, but when we return, we'll still be making sense of mentorship of boys to men. Boys being mentored to become men. There are boys who think they are men, yet they are actually boys. And there are those who think they are men, yet in the actual sense, they are simply putting on attires of men, but they are still boys. Let's be right back for after this short break. I'm still with uh, the engineer Chibuka and Paul making sense of mentorship. Have a good uh, time. Do you have a business that you are looking to grow? Advertising with Church of Uganda Family TV is the way to go. We are located on Church House Level 13 along Kampala Road. We offer favorable rates and an extremely creative production team that will work with you to take your business to the next level. To give us a ring, call us on 0781-0842-1000. Zero seven five zero six five five two three two. Church of Uganda Family TV enriching lives. Do you know that you can now enjoy great enriching shows anywhere through the Family TV app? Here is how to download it. Open Play Store on your phone. Search for the Family TV app. Click Install. After installing it, open it and enjoy enriching content anywhere, everywhere, anytime. Family TV. Enriching lights. Brethren, yes we can. We can clear the debt of church house. And I want to invite you to give generously to the love gift. May God bless you as you give. Let's Talk. Let's Talk is an uncensored program on Family TV that attempts to answer questions that are unanswered within our church settings. Questions like sex and money, uh, drugs and alcoholism, prophecy and prophets in our country. So, catch us at 9pm 
every Tuesday on Family TV as we explore different topics and make attempts to answer the different life topics. Every Tuesday with me, Manuel Odeke. Let's talk. Welcome back from that uh, short break. It is still Let's Talk. And uh, my name is Emmanuel, and I'm still with my guests for today, uh, Engineer Paul Ronald Chibuka, and uh, he's uh, the President of Fathers Union Diocese of Kampala. And uh, Paul, you know, uh, the Diocesan Youth Chairperson. So one is a man, and one <laughs> is a boy. Yes. I hope there is mentorship from uh, boyhood to manhood by the end of uh, at the end of this, but definitely we want to think that uh, mentorship, <coughs> mentorship is not a one hour thing, it's not a two weeks business, it is something that takes a while and then a uh, lot of attention being given to you. Uh, uh, engineer, yes, sir. Could we start from where, or where Paul had left it? Why aren't the young people letting the elders mm. shape the things they are supposed to shape? Okay. Um, I think one of the worries I could pick it from uh, um, an analogy is told about uh, mango farming in, in one of the countries in Asia. Uh, um, mango farmers in India, what they, could, they used to do is that uh, when they plant the mango, they let it first flower, and when it brings the first flower, they get it off. Then they wait for the next flowering. Then it comes, they get it off. Then they wait for the third one. When it comes, they let it grow. And when it grows, it brings out quite a good number of plants or fruits and many and it, it really flourishes and it, it continues producing and producing. And when I ask what, what could be the logic behind this, the logic is that uh, they give it time to mature. And when it matures, the tree matures well, it produces good fruits. Now one of the challenges we have in our young people is growing too fast. They, they are growing too fast. <laughs> you, you, you find a 10 year old or 12. Are they growing beyond their age? Exactly. That's what, that's, that's what it is exactly. The youth, the young people are growing too fast beyond their age. And therefore, they even think the wisdom they pick from, as they say, the social media, uh, the, the, the Google and the what, because there are some who reason. You say, okay. Can you go to uh, Emmanuel and ask about this? Say, ah, no, 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 no. Let me Google. They think of <laughs> the, the ideas from Emmanuel are exact like fashion, exact. boring, so, old. And when the parents also come and say, yes, you know, go ahead, because the world is a global village. Yes, it is. But there are cultures which cannot just be picked lousy like that. So, growing too fast is a challenge. Even in young people, just look at it. Somebody at the age of 12 has started thinking of a boyfriend, a girlfriend. By 15 or 17, he has gotten three heartbreaks. I think, I think engineer is still <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> I was in my village, yes. and the children who are 13 years yes. have given birth to children. You see? So, so this is the problem. This is the challenge. So, let, let me say, by 19 or 20, Somebody has gotten over five heartbreaks, you see, out of these unprepared relationships. Now, when will you have time to grow your brain? When will you think? When will you plan? If your life is entangled into emotions and heartbreaks and relationship failures, instead of preparing your life for the future. At that tender age. At that tender age. But in year old is having a child. Yes. A child is giving birth to another, another child. Another child. Who is going to bring the other? Up? This because is maybe the problem. Maybe that child will also grow fast. <coughs> you see, this is the problem. And it's a generational problem, which we needed to confront with a high level of wisdom. You see? And we need to interrogate our wisdom and what we've gone through, because part of it is attributed to we, the parents. You, you hear parents say, okay, um, me, I remember how I grew up. I remember how I suffered from the village where I was. Uh, my, my, my children shouldn't be part of that. I always ask, if there's something that shaped Chibuka to be who he is, if there's some way um, Emmanuel was shaped to be who he is today, if there's some way Paul was shaped 
to be who he is today. Why don't I pick into what I've gotten so that I pass it on to my children to give them a good start in life? This is where we miss the point. And then we come into what we call the middle class and they start adopting what doesn't belong to us. I remember one of the elders is a bishop and uh, he lives in the States. And one, of the well, one time I called him to address a Decision Fathers Union Fellowship. And he, he made a mention, he said, my brother, I stay in the U.S., but the most difficult thing is raising a child in the U.S. Yes, it is. And I remember I've got a friend and a neighbor. Is a, he, was, he lived in the U.S. for quite a long time. He's a doctor, but he ran from U.S. to here because his children wanted to take him to jail for, you know, being a strong African man on them. And he ran back, he said, okay, he left them with their mother, and he came and sat on here. You see? So, this is it. And I want to borrow the words of um, Dr. James Dobson in his book, when he wrote his book, he say, uh, the, the book says, parenting isn't for cowards. He, he was emphasizing a point that you must not be a coward to make a decision in parenting. There is a need to make a rightful decisions in parenting. So when Dr. Dipson, uh, James Dipson was writing, he said, parenting isn't for cowards. My brother, parenting is for strong people. Parenting is for strong-hearted who can make rightful decisions which might not be even understood at the right time or at a, a time like this, but can be understood in the near future. 90% of the genuine strong men I've talked to, the achievers, those whom you can look up to as role models and examples, when they tell you the story behind their lives, they have gone through hands of strong women and men who made the rightful decisions to make them be in their lives. Now, we need to look back at the drawing board as men or as parents and shape the way we guide, we mentor, we give hope to the generation coming tomorrow. I know of a friend who lived in the U.S. when his children made an attempt to do a similar thing. Yes. He bought two flags, got the Ugandan flag, put inside his house, mm -hmm. got the American flag, put at the door. And he told the children, when you're inside here, yes. you're in Uganda. Exactly. So I treat you and I bring you up the Ugandan way. When you're out, the American. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's great. Paul, what is the, what, how, how is social media and Uncle Google influencing mentorship among the young people today? Um, you see, when we talk about mentorship, mentorship is helping a learner to grow in a certain direction. And so that means you, the mentee, I mean, you, the mentor of the mentee, you must know that direction, and you must be well versed with it. And for me, being not just a church goer, as many people are, but being the Christian I am, mentorship should be pointing people to the person of Christ. Now, that means you, the mentor, you must be knowledgeable about the person of Christ, like engineer pointed us in 1 Corinthians 11 saying, imitate me as I imitate Christ. In other words, Paul was telling the listener that you imitate me as I imitate Christ. In other words, he's telling them, it is not me. It is actually Christ that you must imitate. Now, what, how Google and all these things have influenced into the lives of youth is that we have now forgotten the personality of Christ. And now because Uncle Bubu is readily available, internet is readily available on our phones. In fact, governments are struggling to make internet very available even in the cities. I thank God our Uganda is still struggling in that. Because when you go to Google, you're not going to find one man's work like the Bible will present. You get it. But Google is going to give you a wide or a variety of answers. And so you find that when you read one 
and then what is in your mind tells you this one is good. You read the contrary one because your body does not agree with the contrary one, which usually is the truth. <coughs> you know, you find that you're not going to agree with it. And then also, as you interact, there are people whose intention is actually to influence you to agree with the wrong mentorship. So when they are mentoring you in a certain direction, you're going to struggle or you're going to live your life in that direction. Google cannot mentor any human being. But a human being can mentor another human being. But you, Abraham you, mentored his son. You and I know. Moses mentored Joshua. <laughs> you know? So Jesus mentored, mentored the disciples. It is not Google. It is not as people say the Holy Spirit is mentoring me. No. God is not confused to put humans with the humans. Jesus came and mentored the disciples so that these people can mentor us. So when we follow Google, it is going to infiltrate us because Google has a lot of things. You can put what is discipleship and it brings for you, it brings for you naked women. And you say, so this is discipleship? But because you asked and it has come, so you will take it. That is how Google has spoiled the generation we are in. The beauty of Google is there are things it can't give you. Mm can't tell you how to parent your child. Exactly. It cannot tell you how you're supposed to grow up and become a real man. No. Uh, Google has a limit. So young people out there, just for your information, if you think Google is, uh, is an answer to everything, if you think Google is, is a solution to all matters, and whatever you need, you can run to Google, there is information that is only found in those bold heads that you see there. Mm. The information that you only get from those men with gray hair and the information with, that you get with those old grandmothers who have things that look like slippers on their chests. When you, do, when you, when you look at them like they don't matter, you will not get that information. And I think the best Google is the Bible. <coughs> when uh, you have a Bible... But then still, the Bible is very good. It's it is very the best powerful. Google you have. That is why it says, the scripture read, honor your parents. Yes. But it does not again break down and tell you, how do you honor? Mm. So the rest of the beat, the beats need to come from the parents <laughs> exactly. uh, down there. Friends, we have, there is a drive that the Archbishop has started. Yes. It's called Boys to Men. Yes. And the engineer Chibuka is, is at the forefront of, of is, uh, this drive. Exactly. What, what is it about? Oh, well, uh, thank you, Emmanuel. Um, Boys to Men is a ministry that looks at the status of a boy child. And uh, it has been on, on in such a way that great men felt a gap and they felt that wisdom should be passed on from generation to generation through the young people. I'll tell you, um, I had an organization called Brotherhood of St. Andrews, and it was started by the late Bishop Nkoyo. Uh, this ministry is for boys and men. And under this ministry, the main focus is to bring boys and men to Christ, to know Christ. So um, we've been driving through, and the, the cry has been, why do we have so many of our young boys and men into dubious acts, into prison, onto streets, than into the church? And we thought that this is the way to go, under knowing these three great areas. Um, knowing or reading the word, prayer, and service. That's what drives the Brotherhood of St. Andrew. And the Brotherhood of St. Andrews, without picked a product or a section of boys to men, as boys alone. And under boys to men, we got in together with other people who felt that we have a burden of shaping the boy child. Because we knew that as men, who have grown and of age, it's very, very hard to bring them back to the right road, much as we can pick on some few, but the young people are our biggest target. And in my culture, we have a saying that 
bokagola kamenyi kabumenyi literally meaning when a tree gets bent at its uh, early level when it's growing when you force it back into the shape it will just right. break so now we want to deal with young men or young people from quite the age of infants and that's why boys to men starts from our main target is to shape young boys into men of valor when you read judges 6 2 it talks about who a man of valor is men who know christ men who are well well shaped men who will know what it takes to be a man the, the young boys want them to move stage from one stage to the other uh, look at a young boy like when we get down the bible a boy like isaac when his father took him to be sacrificed and the boy carried the whole firewood and was very free and was moving and was chatting with the father reaching the level of asking the father but then i'm seeing the preparations are done everything is available i'm seeing us with all ready to go but now where I is the land <laughs> you know he was not even scared but the love between the father and the son the oneness the talk the openness and the father said no don't worry my son the lord will provide and indeed the lord provided your father who is watching me out there what relationship do you have with this young man how do you talk with your boy is there hope in you and him are you showing him a direction that gives him hope are you those two friends that one can mentor the other when we get to what i said earlier on can you be imitated as a father in your own shape as a father in the home can you be imitated can the children say the step of the father what he does is really what i want to do is what i want to become is the life i want to live or you are the father who gets back drunk who beats up the, the, the mother who quarrels every day you are a father who is somehow half present and absent what kind of father are you so that's what you want to look at we want to shape this boy into that direction i want to give a testimony briefly when we had this youth camp which we concluded i remember um one saw me from tv and he called me all the way from chotera and said i'm going through a tough time my boy is 13 but we are off track abc is happening i said please send that boy to me and the boy the mother brought the boy to me and the boy, the boy was part of the camp we went through it well he was excited he learned a lot now one time I was in those areas of Chotela Mutukula. The boy spotted my car and he stopped me. He said, Engineer, I stopped him. He called me. And when he called me, he introduced me to his father. Now, by the time the mother calls me to send the boy, the problem was the father. The father had become a very messy guy. Never wanted to see this boy, not even paying school fees. It was very tough. Now, when the boy calls me, he takes me to the father. I talked to the father. The father says, thank you, sir. I saw you in Boys to Men. I remember when I met you at the hotel, but thank you for shaping my boy. I got a one-on-one -on -one with the father. I said, my brother, it's our duty to shape this boy into the best man he wanted to be. Me and you, we need to do this work. Just a lesson. That means we need to reach out to each and every soul, wherever it is, and strength, strengthen them. Reach out to the boys. Right now, we're having a, an outreach program into the schools because our boys, they get messed up in so many different environments, but they have nobody to talk to. The fathers were absent. Even at school, we're absent. So now, we, we reach out to them, we, we, we shape them, we talk to them, we mentor them, we share. They ask us, "Who oh, I want to be this. How do I get there? How do I confront this? How do I overcome this? I remember a lady coming to me. She, she got me on the radio and she had me. She drove to the studio. She talked to me and she told me, I have a boy. This is the boy. The boy is growing. He's asking me tough questions. I know nothing. The father is up to me. The mother surrendered the boy. I said, fine, give me the boy. The boy came to me. We started our way. I got testimony, said, no, this is the best boy now. Mm. My boy is shape, the boy is good. And the boy told the mother, mom, don't disturb me. You leave the father to be where he is. I have the uncle. I can always refer to him. Mm. Now, my question is to you, the man who is watching me out there. Are you a role model in any way? Are you doing anything 
to shape the life of a young man. Let that young man not be your own son. But in the environment where we are, can you be a father figure? Can you be a father? Can you play a father role? I want to tell you, even in church we have men. You know, we are together, we are in fellowship, we are families. But there comes a time when a tragedy happens and maybe one man goes to be with the Lord. The remaining men and fathers, can you play a father role into the family of your brother? Don't in the shape that you are taking on the widow, you want to take on the wife. But can you be a father figure into the life of that family? Can you be that? How many of you fathers who can testify that non biological children of yours who are just seeing you, they can testify, and the girl says, that one is my mentor, that one is my father, without pulling her skirts down, without disturbing her because she applied for a job and then you and a dress hand, you, you know, without doing that, because that's the character of a father. That's the character of the father we're talking about. The man of Vara we talk about is that man. I'm excited hearing about men of Vara, yes. uh, men who, you, you know, we've had too much of women and men special. Yes. Women, women, organizations about women are everywhere. There's a lot of funding for women. Yes. yes. But boys are suffering yes. locally. Yes, true. And they are dying locally in their own way because yes. they, they, they want to think they are ninjas. They, mm. they don't want to bring out their trouble. They have actually become the two types. Yeah. So, so they are dying locally in their own game, in their own movie, which I think is very dangerous. Very dangerous. But I'm, I'm excited that now we can hear about men of valor. Uh, women of valor has been... Uh, and uh, Emmanuel, let's not just hear, but uh, we need to walk the talk and strengthen ourselves as men and do the right thing. Mm. I want to tell you, one of the problems of uh, uh, women emancipation, it wasn't a bad program, but, the but there, was, there was a hidden agenda in it. Mm. I want to tell you that uh, from the West, the funders and financial aspect of the coming project, but not what is going on. Exactly. The exactly. The hidden agenda. By the time we got into what's behind it, a lot of mess had been done. Mm. And now women have struggled to do everything they do and they have labored. You can make mention of all of them. Uh, you start with a uh, Mama Navagereka, you talk of uh, the former VP Kazibwe, you talk of uh, uh, Mama Miriam Atembe, then quite a number of ladies who have stood for the right of a girl child. And so many other women, they have tried to shape, organize girls and what. But because we got in a problem with a boy child, when they prepared these girls nicely well and they struggled for them, they then, ended up messing, getting into hands of a messed up exactly. generation of And therefore, men. in my culture, they say, Ayuzi Zana Yanika Mutaka. Our time is almost done here. Paul, how does this information fall into ears of the youth? Uh, and, and immediately you answer that, you give your parting shots. You have about a minute, a minute, and then we should be out of this. Okay. Uh, how, do, how does this information fall in? Boys to men, I men think, of valor. I think for me, the words to people of my age out there, even of Emma's age, he just got married, he's also still a boy. <laughs> my word to you is that let's have a teachable spirit. And uh, Without a teachable spirit, you're doomed. You know, the problem we have is thinking I'm wise. And like I said in the beginning, it is only somebody who has known that he's a sinner and he needs a savior who can follow Christ. And so until you come to know that even at your age as a young man, as a youth, you still need some wisdom. It may be not just from men with gray hair, there are those with gray hair who are absent. It may be not just from men with bald heads. There are those who are not absent. But there are those who are present. And you know them. And the problem is that you hate them because they tell you the truth. So have a teachable spirit. Spend your time with the Lord. Pray for the people that you're going to meet. And I tell you, don't throw away your Bible. I move with mine, even in the back. There's no way they can stop me from entering with this. It's not, it's not a weapon for killing people. Spend time with your Bible, read it, and you will enjoy life. 
And I want to tell you that if you have the teachable spirit, you pray for the person who is mentoring you and pray for yourself that God will open up your heart and you be mentored so that the person mentoring you, of course, should know the Lord. If your mentor is somebody who doesn't glorify God, they are not mentoring you, but they are leading you to hell okay. and run away. One scripture as I close, Ecclesiastes 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, remember also your creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw near of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. I know there are some of you who have got already no pleasure in what you are doing. Verse 2 says, before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain. In the day when keepers of the house tremble and when and the strong men are bent and the grinders cease because they are few and those who look through the window are dim. Remember the Lord in the days of your youth. Have a teachable spirit and you'll enjoy Thank you the very Lord. Much, Paul. Thank you. Uh, Engineer Ronald. Thank you. But, uh, I'm sure we'll have another time. This has been very uh, uh, brainstorming. That's wonderful. And um, brain cracking. How about for today, let's, let's you just give your parting shots and then uh, we'll have Thank you so much. I, I think I'll close with these few remarks to uh, both uh, the parents and uh, uh, our young people. Um, dear friends, the words are in marriage, four six. And uh, clearly here, he came to join the, 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 the spirit of fathers to their children, or else destruction will happen. I want to pray that we do this knowing which we each have a role. To young people, wisdom is gold. Have the in and outer ears to listen and hear. Wisdom is gold. Seek it from the right people. And the best will happen in your life. Good evening, viewers. Thank you so much. And be Thank you very much, uh, uh, Engineer Ronald Chibuka and uh, Paul Geno. Uh, Paul still says I am a boy. <laughs> I think he has forgotten that there is, <laughs> there is a mountain he has not yet finished. Yes. <laughs> Paul, you and you are. Wisdom is gold. <laughs> See, I have a teachable spirit. I have engineer. <laughs> I have a teachable spirit. When you until you accept you are a boy, then you can be told on how to become a man. <laughs> That's great. Well, it has been a pleasure to have been with you here on the family church of Uganda Family TV. And uh, that's how we do it every Tuesday at 9 to 10. It is always a joy to uh, be here with you. You can always catch up with us uh, on uh, the Facebook page of uh, church of Uganda Family TV and the YouTube channel. Subscribe and you will always get these alerts there for you. Thank you very much. Those who think you are boys and yet you are supposed to be a man, I think you know what to do now. The only thing you need to do is uh, find somebody to mentor you. Don't just find somebody, but find somebody who was mentor to mentor you to what you want to do now. How about I wish you a good night. God bless you. God bless Uganda. God bless Family TV. From me and the team, it's a good night. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk is an uncensored program on Family TV that attempts to answer questions that are unanswered within our chat settings. Questions like